I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you about the Bachelor of Science program in Speech and Hearing Sciences at the University of Hong Kong. In this talk, there are three parts. In the first part, I'll give you a brief introduction of the profession of speech therapist, and then I will give you some highlights of the curriculum of speech and hearing sciences um, of um, the University of Hong Kong. Then I will tell you about the requirements and procedures to apply to the program. First of all, um, what do speech pathologists do? OK, we provide assessment, diagnosis, and treatment to a range of disorders. For example, we work with people with speech disorders, so people may have difficulties producing uh, intelligible, intelligible speech and fluent speech. And for some, they will have difficulties with verbal and nonverbal communication, and they have difficulties understanding others' speech, or they may have difficulties expressing themselves. Also, for people who may have allergies or abnormalities in their vocal folds, they may have voice problems. Some of us may not know that we work with people with swallowing disorders. Actually, for some people with medical conditions such as stroke, cancer, or degenerative um, diseases such as dementia, Alzheimer's, they may have difficulties drinking and swallowing. So speech-language pathologists help them. Also. In school, some school-aged children may have particular difficulties with reading and writing. So as speech-language pathologists, we work with teachers, psychologists to help these children succeed in school. And also for people with hearing loss, they tend to have difficulties with speech and language. So we also work with this population. As you can see in the center of the diagram, um, we do not only work with clients, we also work with teachers, professionals such as um, doctors, um, physical therapists, um, occupational therapists. And we also work very closely with parents, families, and teachers. So um, what populations do speech-language pathologists serve? As you can see, we work with people from uh, uh, across the lifespan. Um, and also, we work with people who have different clinical populations who are in different clinical populations, such as people with autism spectrum disorders, Down syndrome, um, intellectual disabilities, stroke, and cancer. This means that um, for us who are in the profession, should be very interested in working with people from young, um, as young as infants to older people, aged adults, and to be able to, to work with and interest in working with people with clinical disorders. So where do we work? Um, what settings do we work in? Um, we mostly work in government um, organizations, preschools, uh, primary schools, secondary schools, special schools. Um, we also work in nursing homes, um, hospitals, private practice, and universities. According to the statistics last year, our graduates, 96%, were employed. Two of them um, decided to go for further studies. And for new graduates in our program, what um, employment sectors do they work in? They mostly work in the non-government um, organizations, educational institutions, and some of them work in private practice and hospitals. And about the salary, um, our graduates make a decent salary, but we hope that this is not the major criterion you use to select the program and to select a profession. We think that it's much more important for you to find something that you like and you're good at. I think the job satisfaction will be much better. But for your information, um, the salary, the median salary our graduates are receiving is about 30,000 a month, meaning recent graduates, they will have a starting salary when they graduate of $30,000. So if now you think that um, speech pathology is really a profession for you, and you're really interested in it. How do you become a speech-language pathologist? Then I would say that the Bachelor of Science program in speech and hearing sciences at the University of Hong Kong would be a right choice for you. The reason is that this is the only um, undergraduate program in Hong Kong, and we provide a five-year full-time training, very intensive, systematic, to help you to become uh, a competent speech-language pathologist. We adopt a translational learning curriculum. And the goals of this curriculum is to facilitate students to become independent and critical thinkers. We also would like to equip our students with the ability to pursue lifelong learning. 
and we want to allow our students to integrate and apply the knowledge they learn in classes to provide evidence-based and person-centered services. Here's the structure of the curriculum. For the courses, we design them so that it's discovery-based, problem-based, and case-based. And for the clinical practice, we adopt this apprenticeship model. In the first two years, students will be able to observe speech-language pathologists work in the clinical settings. In the fourth year, they will work with children directly to provide th therapy um, in the clinic. And then in the fourth year, they will work with adult patients and provide them with individual and group therapy. In the fifth year, there's a mix of cases of pediatric and adult cases. Okay, let me say a few words about clinical practica. All the practica are supervised by experienced internal and external supervisors. Students work with, in a varieties of settings, including internal, external clinics, and hospitals. We always emphasize evidence-based and science-based um, practice. These are pictures of the internal clinic at the um, Kennedy Town Center. There's a big component in the last year, which is on research dissertation. Students have to complete an individual research project and submit a 30-page dissertation and present at a conference. These um, dissertations are really of very high quality, and some of them are published in important international journals. Now let's talk about admissions requirements. This year, we are expecting to take 48 students. There's no fixed quota for JUPIS or non-JUPIS applicants. All applicants have to attend an interview, and they have to submit a personal statement in the application. For JUPIS admissions, only applicants who put our program in band one choices will be considered and they all have to attend the JUPAS interview on June 12. And for the best six subjects, they need to have um, level four or above in English, level three or above in biology, or combined science with a biology component. For DSE scores in previous years, they could check our website uh, for updated information. Again, the JUPAS interview will be on June 12, 2020. It's compulsory, and it's a half-day event, and it will include individual interviews and group interviews. And for non jupas applicants, we mainly consider applicants who have listed us as the first choice. And also, they have to be proficient in English and Cantonese and should be able to write Chinese. Also, they must have a biology component and they are con being considered on a case-by-case -case basis. We will provide shortlisted candidates interviews in December in, in May next year. So how do you better prepare yourself to apply to the program? I strongly encourage you to look up the online information about the program, about the profession, so you'll see some uh, suggestions here. Also, I strongly recommend that you go to um, organizations to vo volunteer yourselves so that you can work with the populations that you will be working with so to see whether you, you really feel comfortable and like, enjoy working with them. Also, you may talk to current speech and hearing sciences students or speech language pathologists in the program. One way is to get to the website of the Speech and Action, which is a service group um, provided by our students. You can contact the students, you can um, participate in their studies. So this is the end of my presentation today. So if you have any questions, please email us. Thank you. <laughs>